Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. This is Mod C33 here, aka Crystal with the C. Back at you with another video. But if you're new to my channel, if you just happen to click on, welcome, welcome, welcome. I try to put out one or two videos a week. I do sit downs, reviews, reactions, vlogs. So if any of that interests you, make sure you check out the prior videos on my channel. And if you see anything you like before you leave, make sure you subscribe. So today, you guys, I'm gonna be doing another reaction. I just finished up um, a reaction for Cloak and Dagger, season two, episode three. Again, don't know what the episode's called. And I don't know what episode four is called. And that's what I'm going to be reacting to right now. Um, so I did just watch episode three, which was really, really good. It kind of filled in some of those missing pieces and gaps of um, what happened to O'Reilly in the time of the present versus um, when the whole explosion and accident happened. Um, so that was really cool. We kind of flashed back and forth between the present and the past to kind of catch up to where we presently are. So I really liked the format of that episode, you kind of see a little bit of a divide between Tyrone and Tandy because, um, you know, we're introduced to this character Mayhem, who is a part of O'Reilly, but is more a part of the angry, aggressive side of O'Reilly. And now we find out that they've split into two. And so um, Tandy is very angry about, you know, a lot of things that are happening about these missing girls. And so Mayhem, it appears, you know, again, is using lethal force essentially to get answers about what has happened with these girls and we see that initially her mission was to find connor's and then um you know to essentially get revenge on connor's and she just stumbled upon this whole case with these missing girls and that's how you know this is how she kind of got on this particular path so we see that essentially you know with her looking for these girls she's leaving like a trail of bodies in her wake and you know because Tang tandy's angry about the fact that again nobody was looking for these girls they just are kind of in the wind um and it appears that mayhem is getting results you know tandy's like well you know at least she doing something she don't want to find the girls we didn't find them but you know tyrone is saying again that yes yeah, she's getting temporary results but she's leaving like again mayhem in her way like in her path um she's leaving all these dead bodies all these people like and these are people who will never face justice will never go to court um these are you know individuals that these girls will never you know have the um opportunity to face down in court and tell people you know tell their story essentially of what happened to them of course everybody doesn't want to do that but they should have at least been given the opportunity to do that you know as far as um I feel like that's kind of how Tyrone was feeling about it because, you know, with Tyrone, again, he sees what anger has done to him for so long, the anger that he had for Connors. And now that Connors is quote unquote gone, you know, he's just really been to himself and had to deal with, you know, his own feelings about, you know, everything that happened with Billy and trying to move on from that. So Tandy is a little bit angry. Tyrone's the kind of the more logical person here. We see Tyrone using his ability of being able to teleport people with him, but that's kind of taking a toll on him and he's somewhat disoriented every time he continues to use his abilities like that. And it might just be a matter of him needing to work on it more so he can kind of build up more of a tolerance for it, or it just might be too much for him. We see Tandy use her new ability. Um, they do end up finding two groups of missing girls. Um, Mayhem found the first pair, but then they were able to look into um, the fears of the other girl and find one of the girls who uh, was recovered and then find another group of missing girls. And, you know, Mayhem is trying to kill everybody who was there keeping those girls. And um, Tyrone is, is able to protect one of the younger boys because probably the boy looks about Tyrone's age, maybe even a little bit younger. And Mayhem was just going around, got the gun, and was about to kill all of them. And Tyrone was able to protect that one. And it looks like he teleported Mayhem to like the dark dimension. So I wonder, yeah, what we're going to see there, if we're going to see another appearance by Connors or what's going to happen with that. So, um... Yeah, I'm really intrigued by that. But without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and get into my reaction for episode four of Cloak and Dagger. Praise God, I have not had any issues. Episode three recorded really well. So hopefully um, I'll be able to re-record and get that one out to you guys with, you know, barely any hiccups because there are always some hiccups since I record on my phone. But um, hopefully, you know, again, um, this reaction will go well all, as well. You know, it will also 
go well and um, I'll be able to get this one out to you guys without any hiccups or incidents. So anyway, without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and get into this reaction for season two, episode four of Cloak and Dagger. And I will see you guys on the other side with my review and observations. Bye, guys. Look, I want to go home. I want my life back. You know that. But, but it's not like I can just, just step into myself. Maybe you can Maybe I can do it. Mm, I don't think that's a good idea. Two people enter. What if I pull him out and I'm not brave enough to stop him? To end him again? <sighs> Just the thought of that. Terrifies you. We're going to talk about this when you get back. Assuming I get back. Well, you got this. Go get her. And be careful. Yeah, this is not weird at all. <laughs> Tandy? Yo, what's all these panties? You saw them in the refrigerator with fumes. You have bigger problems. It's the uptown blockings. They saw you want a poster of booking. Okay, well, they don't know about the church, right? No, but you do have an address on record. Oh, crap. So his parents are for real separated. That's horrible. Well, it's essentially like the loss of two kids. Oh, okay, Mom. Mom right here packing. Got a gun up in the drawer. Don't even think about... So what's your name? I have too many. I am that which stands at the crossroads. St. Peter, Atterborn, Papa Legua. Hi. Well, uh, Papa, <laughs> um, I walked through this door because someone came in before I did. A woman, she was bleeding and I followed the blood here. So there is a way out. The only way out is through. Through what? To the garland of transactions. What? Okay. Need a minute. So head into uncertain doom without the only thing that keeps me safe. It's not the only thing. Mom, Mom we gotta go. Now! Come on, come on. Okay, now hold on. Rise. They wanna see oh. me. They oh. love to see oh, me like down. What the hell are you doing here? Yeah, but still I rise. Why are you calling out one of your little? They only come out when I'm afraid. Why are you here? I need to know what you know about what happened to those girls. I offered you a team up and you said no. So now just stay out of my face until I can find my way out of here. That's the thing, though. Papa, Miss Stray over at the gas station says you're only a half person and that you can't get out on your own. The toxic side. The pain, the anger. The what? Mayhem. I'm wrong with a little mayhem. It's one way to shake up the status quo. Sometimes the status quo is okay. And sometimes girls are stolen and sold into slavery. Oh, wait. That's all the time. See, I can't even mess with it. Someone's been living here. Not be calling us. For months, from the looks of it. Is this where he's been this whole time? How should I know? You know what he did, right? To Fuchs? I do. But I also know that Ty needs Connors alive if he's ever going to get his life back. Here I was thinking that you're a warrior. I am, but when it comes to Ty, when it comes to men, they have their own power structure and they do not need your help propping it up. Wow. Look at the pictures on these records. 
and the name saw me dividers. I know a lot of these names, a lot of these faces. These are Emerson girls. But this recent rash of disappearances was different. I noticed that more and more girls were missing from the city proper. Legend has it. I can see people's hopes. Mm. These seem like they're parts of them. When hope was... Medication bottles. Wanting. What's the word for lack of hope? Despair. Yo, I got him. Really, little boy?
Um, essentially, you had these guys who got caught from episode three. They did recognize um, a poster that a wanted poster that had Tyrone's picture on it. So um, Tyrone was really afraid for his mother's life. And went home and sees his mother has you know definitely changed, and she's doing some investigation into Roxanne to try to see if she can clear her son's name. <clears throat> well, I don't think it was specifically because his mom worked for Roxanne, but she was doing investigation as far as, um, I think, into the police force because she was trying to clear her son's name. So you had that go on and, um, you know, they were able to somewhat escape. But then you had this um, younger boy who essentially Tyrone saved and he's a part of this gang. And so... Um, like he ended up calling the gang and letting them know that he had found Tyrone and his mother. And so, um, but then Tyrone was able to convince him, you know, to um, tell them that the police were coming. And so they did leave, but the police actually came. I don't know what Tyrone be doing. I just did not think that was a wise idea because especially like, and I'm not saying this to be negative or anything, but the fact of the matter is Tyrone is branded as a cop killer and that does not bode well for you being taken in um, alive by, you know, an, an angry and somewhat corrupt police force because we know that Connors was a part of this police force. This is what we know about this New Orleans police force. We know that Connors was a part of this police force. We know that Connors executed, well, not executed, Connors accidentally killed Tyrone's brother, Billy, and was never prosecuted for it because his uncle, who was a police chief, covered it up. We know that, um, you know, Connors beat down O'Reilly in the middle of a bar after Fuchs was killed in, in front of all these police officers. Nobody lifted a hand to help her. We know that. So we know that there's got to be more than one person in this police department who's dirty. More than just Connors. So we know that. Um, we also know Fuchs was killed and we don't know exactly who killed him, but Connors was in on it. Connors knew about it. So we know that Fuchs was executed. So that's what I'm saying. We know all these things. So I wouldn't be trusting the police force to take me in safely and for me to be alive. Like I wouldn't trust that at all. I'm, I'm there with his mama. I'm like, nah, uh, you should have called no police. And O'Reilly talking about, oh, yeah, I told you he was on unarmed. She's like, yeah, so was Fuchs. I'm like, listen, they act like they care about Fuchs. And one of your officers probably went in there and killed Fuchs. Come on, let's keep it 100. Let's keep it honest. So you had that go on. And also you have Tandy and O'Reilly who were in the dark dimension. And, um, you know, younger Tyrone tells Tandy that she cannot use her, um, you know, abilities in the dark dimension or... Um, it's a one way trip or something. I don't know what that meant because like clearly she did. And then they were able to go back with Tyrone. Like Tyrone was able to use his ability, get out of that, um, abandoned church, I believe. And then, you know, go back to, you know, his little safe place, that abandoned church that he's been living in. And he brought, um, Tandy and Connors. Connors showed him waste no time. He broke a window and left, honey. And uh, we don't know where O'Reilly is. She might be right behind him somewhere. So um, we did see that. So I'm really intrigued to see what happens with Connors now that he's back in, you know, the real world. And um, if he's going to try to run, if he, is he going to try to go back to the police department? Like, what is he going to try to do? So I'm really curious because I don't know if they um, were planning to convict Connors of anything. And even if it's gotten up to like his uncle and all these people who, who had this cover up of Billy Johnson dying. So, you know, none of that has really been addressed. Not that we've seen. I know that his mother was trying to do that. So I don't know. I'm really curious about that. But anyway, guys, that was episode four of Cloak and Dagger season two. Really good episode again. I love the storytelling in these episodes. Like, you know, you had the last episode where we were going back and forth in time and kind of catching up with O'Reilly to see how this whole divide with her happened. And then we had this episode where Tandy is essentially um, in a record studio and seeing all of this stuff with these missing girls and then finds, you know, essentially records that have her name on it and goes through and plays them and sees, like, memories of, like her childhood with her parents and, you know, again, recognizing now that she, what she probably didn't realize then, but now that she realizes that seeing her mother's memories, you know, of her parents fighting, of her father being abusive toward her mother, you know, she was, she heard these things 
but um, she probably didn't realize it until now what she was actually hearing and what was actually going on since she was just a child then. So that was a really cool method of storytelling. I really enjoyed the storytelling aspect of Cloak and Dagger, like how they, you know, instead of just going straight forward, since we have abilities and all in this world, in this world, we can creatively tell a story. So I just thought that was really cool. One of my favorite parts of the episode. So anyway, guys, that was my review. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. If you did, give this video a thumbs up. Also, make sure you do um, share this with anyone else who's watching Cloak and Dagger reactions. Comment below. Let me know what you guys thought about this episode. So also before you leave, make sure you subscribe to the channel. You do that by hitting the red button below and hitting the bell next to it so you're notified when I do upload future videos. So I'm really excited about these two episodes that I watched. Hopefully I can get them edited um, and out to you guys so I can go ahead and watch episode five and six because those were really, three and four were really good. So um, again, guys, I will see you in my very next video. Hopefully and that, like hopefully that will be soon as well so I can get these two out to you guys so I can record more. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Hope you all have a wonderful day. I will see you in my next video. Bye, guys.